Go Jackers. So, um, if you have not heard the news by now, um, Georgia Tech has parted ways and fired uh, Josh Pastner in his um, seventh season as a Georgia Tech head coach um, on the basketball side. And I, I'll be honest, um, maybe this shouldn't come as a surprise to me. It, it is a little surprising. I, I thought that they would um, let him start the next season. Um, but I that was me thinking the buyout was larger. And I don't know if the buyout is exactly this. Um, per ESPN, Pete Thamel and Jeff Barzello, um, he's due two and a half million over the next three years, which is interesting to me. That means he's making eight hundred and thirty-three thousand, you know, a year um, to be the head coach. I know he took less um, once COVID hit and we, we hit some financial issues. Um, and look, I like Josh Pastner. Like, um, he was a really upbeat guy. Like, I was there. Um, I was at Tech in, in 2015, around the time he came in. Um, and he really, uh, you know, was excited about the job. Um, he brought up Bobby Cremens and the Thriller Dome and, you know, the success we had had in the 90s and, and really wanting to bring bring that back. I think in his first year, um, please correct me in the comment section. I'm tired. I don't feel like looking it up. Um, he had more home wins than anyone had had. Uh, there was something weird where our schedule had a, a ton of home games. Um, and I actually took my dad. Uh, we made um, not the main tournament. I forget. Like I'm, I'm admittedly not knowledgeable about basketball. But that's not going to prevent me from making a video about it, even though I don't know uh, anything about it. Anyways, um, the the second tournament, like the lesser tournament, um, he you could bring someone for free. So like for students, you could bring, like I could bring my dad, and they had donuts they provided for everyone. Then we played Belmont or something, got a win at home. Um, I want to say the NIL tournament, but that's not it. Um He's only made one tournament appearance. Um, that's when we won the ACC in 2021 on kind of a weird COVID year. Uh, I don't think Virginia was able to play uh, due to COVID, who was probably the best team in the ACC that year. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this shows me that Jay Bat is not uh, messing around. Um, I can say this. like there, there would not have been a lot of excitement going into next year keeping Josh Pastner. And he has really boggled recruiting at Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech's been able to recruit, you know, some some good players in the past. Atlanta, probably one of the most fertile recruiting grounds for basketball. Um, like, I don't know where Chris Bosh came out of, but, you know, Chris Bosh played at Georgia Tech. We made a run in the early 2000s to the finals against and ended up losing against Connecticut. But I, I still remember Jarrett Jack at point guard, and there, there was a ton of good players we had. Um, and, 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 I, and I hate it. I, I didn't think he would survive some of the, the, the other stuff, the off-the-court the uh, stuff. He was accused of a very, uh, I have to be careful on YouTube, a very specific type of assault. Uh, and and to to his credit, that he was completely exonerated of those charges. And I think that the people that accused him uh, are them themselves facing charges. I don't know if it's perjury or, or something, but um, made up a bunch of stuff. But you know, Josh made some really poor decisions as far as who he let close to the program. He had this good friend that he let really, really close to the program. Like, he was in practices. He got him hotel rooms for games. Like, this was a guy that wasn't involved with the team. He was just a friend of Josh's. Um, and this guy created a ton of problems. I think Josh at one point was like, hey, you know, this isn't appropriate. Like, we, we need to put some distance here. And then this guy and his wife made some accusations against Pastner. And I didn't think he would survive that. There was also some, like, we, we were sanctioned, I think, by the NCAA. I think we were, like, taking recruits to the Cheetah or something uh, to this effect. So I didn't think he would survive um, those things. Um, 
And, and though he was innocent of those charges, like it, it's a really poor look that you let someone who's not involved with your program basically have the access that a coach would have to your program. I, I, that's completely boneheaded. Um, the other thing that doesn't help, that didn't help Josh at all, but besides his record, so let's go into that before I, before I continue. Like he was 109 uh, and 114, so he, he was just below 500, uh, but he was worse than that in ACC play. He was 51 and 78. And like I said, he boggled recruiting. It seemed like he thought, um, what was it, the Moses kid? There was two big big uh, players we had that he thought would stay, maybe Jose Alvarez, um, that didn't end up staying, and he wasn't positioned to, um, to replace them for the next season. Um, I haven't looked up like he hasn't, but he just hasn't recruited uh, well. And he hasn't been able to – um, get players to match his style of play. And this is coming, if you watch the live show from homeless Jeff Collins, evidently he likes to run um, a Princeton style of offense that really requires a dominant presence in the five spot at your center. You need a big man to run that through, and we haven't had it. And he's just kind of tried to force that round peg in a square hole. Like you can't you, – you've got to adapt your offense uh, and, and your – your style toward what uh, your players are going to allow you uh, to do. And if you're bent on running that style of offense, you've got to get players in to run it. I mean, that that's this kind of a, a no brainer, especially in basketball and the portal, you should be able to get, get the players in you need to run the style that you want to run. I mean, you're, you're talking about five players. If you can get two, players in that are pretty good that that fit your style you should be able um, to make a run now it did seem like he was coaching for his job toward the end I think he went like seven of eight or something toward the end ended up beating Florida State in the first round of the ACC and then losing to Pitt Um, you know had a strong showing toward the end um, but it it, it just wasn't enough Um, so yeah, and here in in so what I was gonna say about what what didn't help Josh any is he was very Colin esque and and how he spoke and his demeanor uh, and I'm and I'm not straight comparing the two. I mean Josh was able to win some games and won an ACC title, um, so he wasn't a hundred percent equal to Jeff Collins, but his whole. Um, I guess presence was just very Jeff Collins. Um, I I don't think that did him any favors. Um, So Jay Bat pulls the trigger. Um, I didn't realize it was, it looks like two and a half million to buy him out. I guess when you're paying Jeff Collins 11.37, what's another two and a half million on top of that? If it helps your ticket sales going in and, and, and get some people excited uh, for the next season. Um, I do think it's a new, we're, we're, we're getting into a new era uh, of Georgia Tech athletics. We're, we're making the necessary changes. Um, I know this is about Josh Pastner. I think we made the right hire with Brent Key. Um, we've made some very tough decisions on the football side, and this was a tough decision on the basketball side. Um, and if you watch the channel, you know I like, I like to make analogies to, to like the business world or the career world. When you're leading a company, though, like if you're the CEO of a company and you've, you know, installed the mechanisms to take take on water for your ship, and you're about to sink, it's very hard for the same guy to write to write the thing and, and get you back on course and and fix the boat. Usually, that takes a change at the top to get things back moving in the right direction. So, I do think this is the right call. Um, Seven seasons should be enough to see, is this the guy you want leading your program? And unfortunately, he's just not been able uh, to get it done. So Anthony Wilkins uh, will be the interim. Uh, I don't think this is a situation like we had with Brent Key, though admittedly I don't know much about the basketball. I would think we make a hire outside and don't promote someone from within to take the helm. Uh, you would think that we look at someone 
um, that's probably first and foremost a good recruiter in the, in the Atlanta area. Um, that's kind of what it alludes to in the ESPN article. Um, and to end the video, um, how I even found out about this is I got an email through the Georgia Tech Athletics. Um, I might even let me switch screens here. Um, this is the, the email I got. Uh, if, if you're not on this list, uh, I'll just read it. Uh, so it says, after seven seasons as our men's head basketball coach, I've informed Josh Pastner that we are making a change in the leadership of our story program. Josh has been an incredible ambassador for Georgia Tech, treating others with the utmost respect and wearing the passion on his sleeve. He is a genuine, uh, he, his genuine care for student athletics, our men's basketball program, our athletics department, and the Institute is unquestionable. On behalf of the Georgia Tech community, I want to offer my sincere gratitude to Josh, his wife Carrie, and their family for the service to the Institute. Uh, we wish all of them the very best wherever their journey takes them. We have high expectations at Georgia Tech for all of our sports programs. It is imperative that men's basketball achieves a greater level of success. Our men's basketball program is important to our department and to our institution. We will not shy away from expecting to consistently compete for ACC championships, NCAA tournament appearances, and sustained success. I think that right there is, is the important bet for for football and basketball so sustained success that's hard to say five times fast uh i am confident that with the combined strength of the institute and our incredible fan base uh, as well as the support uh, of our city we put on for our city here you know that we can reach our shared goals um our search for a new men's uh, basketball coach is underway and while we will be deliberate in our process, we will move as fast as possible. We seek a new coach who shares our vision and our values and who can best lead us to the very highest levels of, su of sustained success in our men's basketball program. In the meantime, Anthony Wilkins, uh, who has been a member of our men's basketball staff since 2018, will serve as our interim head coach. Thank you for your continued support and go Jacket. Sincerely, uh, Jay Bat. So I know he said uh, they're going to move as fast as possible, um, but I don't think there's necessarily like a huge rush to find someone. And I do think that the men's basketball coach position, and I'm not at all crapping on the football program, but it's just the ACC is a far stronger basketball conference than it is a football conference. I think this is a more appealing um, position at the current time than the, than the football coach. So I think, you know, we're going to be a little bit better positioned to make a hire at the basketball coach um, with the strength of the ACC. So with that being said, guys, we're going to do a live show uh, this Sunday on Sea Dog Show. Um, I did a video on uh, – or on Sea Dog's channel. I did a video on kind of conference realignment, what's going on in the ACC conference – is it over? What's going on with Clemson and FSU? And the last time I looked, it's got like 136 comments. So I would love for y'all um, to, to watch that show. We'll probably open up the stream yard at some point if, if y'all want to talk and hash things out. I know there's a variety of opinions. I absolutely love seeing that, um, all the discussion that's been had. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you ha if you haven't liked the video, uh, that helps out. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. We're on our way to a thousand subscribers on the Rec Talk channel, um, and we have merchandise. Uh, if you want to buy some Rec Talk gear, we have hats, we have shirts, we have mugs. Uh, if you want to donate and help the show, uh, I've done two interviews uh, with Zach Pyron and Clayton Powell Lee. Uh, if you want to see more content like that, you can donate via PayPal in the description or Cash App if you prefer that. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Go Jackets.